Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Los. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, J.O., and we are coming back at y'all with a special guest. We got Kate Martin in the building. She played for Iowa, if you didn't know. One of the biggest stars in Iowa right now. Um, so we're grateful to have uh, Kate Martin join us right now. Kate, for how, you me. how you doing, Kate? I'm good. Good. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk to you guys, talk shop here. Yeah. How uh, How's life after, you know, playing basketball at Iowa? Okay, yeah, okay, I mean, okay. It's, it's been like three days. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it, it sets in, you know, at different times. Some people it hits right away. Some people it takes like a week or something. But like, you know, yeah. how, how's, how's life knowing you don't have practice no more, no yeah. more games and everything like that? How's that? How's that feeling? Yeah, it's been weird so far. I've been bored this week a lot, <laughs> catching up on sleep. I've been tired, but um, I already started working out again. So yeah. uh, I don't like to sit around for too long, but – um, it's been weird just knowing that, you know, I don't have to go to spring workouts or I'm not going to be around for the summer workouts. So it's a little sad, but I mean, I still see my teammates just about every day. So, uh, it's not anything too crazy yet, but once I'm out of Iowa city, I think that's when it'll really hit me. <laughs> Facts, oh, for right. sure. For sure. For sure. What was it like growing up? You know, you grew up in Illinois. What sports did you always just play basketball? Or were there other sports you played or what? Take us, take us back to that time. Yeah, I grew up. Um, the first like part of my life from preschool to fourth grade, I grew up in Granite City, Illinois, and uh, I played all the sports. I ran track, well, it was like a little club thing, and I played basketball, I played baseball, I always played with the boys. I was on my brother's basketball team, um, played baseball, didn't want to do any of the girls' sports, and I played. <laughs> I played tackle football with my guy friends too. So I just, I don't know. I loved being around sports. That's all we did growing up was just play outside. And um, yeah, so it was fun. And then I moved to Edwardsville where I went to high school and sports are a little more competitive there. And so I, I played basketball and volleyball from sixth grade through my senior year of high school. And I really fell in love with volleyball too. I loved it. It was so different from basketball. It was like like uh, more cheery and like super like happy go lucky yeah. and like basketball. I was like you know like always locked in. It's more physical and that's what I loved about basketball is way more physical and volleyball was like not enough physicality for me. So uh, I always just have loved basketball since a young age and that's always been my main sport. That's, that's explains awesome. a lot. Though. That explains a lot. Like it does. Said, it does. Boys, that that explains like your toughness and like. You'll go out there and guard six, five, six, four. It don't really matter. They'll tell you to guard anybody. You'll yeah. be out there just doing whatever. So that explains a lot, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I always played against my dad too. And he's like, you guys have met him, I think. He's like yeah. six, five, six, five. So he never, never took it easy on me down low. But, quick, quick funny story about uh meeting your parents. Um, so we had just got to the locker room, uh, met you, met you all, took a picture. So we're, me and Jalen are walking out and we're walking up. Carver Hawkeye, it's the the way the arena is set up, it's like a stairway to heaven. It's just like it this really long, is. long, long, all these rows going up consecutively. And uh, so Jalen's probably like 15 rows ahead of me. And your mom, which I didn't know was your mom at the time, she stops me. She goes, hey, Carlos, can, we, can I get a picture? And I said, of course. And someone taps me on my shoulder. She goes, you know, that's Kate Martin's mother. I said, Jalen. Jalen, come down here. This is Kate <laughs> Martin's people. This is Kate's people. Jalen came running down the steps, but I just thought that was it was so funny because it was just, it was just such it's it's your mom, and then you're like the biggest deal in Iowa. Like everyone knows Captain Kate. Your t-shirts are everywhere, so it's just it was so surreal for your mom to be like, "Hey, Carlos," and I was like, "Hey, how you doing?" And then she didn't say nothing about being your mom. Yeah. And then somebody... She doesn't like to tell people. <laughs> <laughs> so that was just I was talking about your parents. That, that just came to yeah. mind really quickly. She loves you guys. I told her that I was doing this interview today and she was so excited and wanted me to tell you guys hi. So yeah, that's no, dope. She, we awesome. appreciate everybody in my family's got your guys' merch now. So oh, that's, that's a beautiful in. thing. That's tell hard. them we all said we greatly appreciate it. Mom is a big fan of you too. So she'll be she was happy that I got oh, this interview too. That's nice. No, for sure, for sure. So you said that you started, you, you fell in love with basketball. At what point did you know, like, all right, I'm kind of nice. I can get to a D1 level. Honestly, it probably wasn't until high school. Um, like I always had a <laughs> lot of confidence in myself and like 
with my older sister, my older brother, like I, we would always talk smack to each other, but they always tried to keep me super humble. And I knew I was good, but like I, Edwardsville had a lot of great athletes come through. Like uh, my sister played D2, but her teammates, like three or probably like five or six of them went D1. Like people going to Tennessee, people going to SIUE, SLU, um, Louisville. Like, wow. so Okay. yeah, it was like, I didn't really know how good I could be or how good like I was going to be. Um, and one of my teammates, a few of my teammates, like my junior year, we had seven D1 players on my high school team, public school too. So it was just crazy. We all grew That's up super together. competitive. Yeah, that's Yeah, crazy. super competitive. So I didn't know how good I would be. And then I got my first offer sophomore year and it was a mid-major. And I was like, dad, like, oh my gosh, I think I need to commit here. Like, I, like, I don't know if it's going to get better than this. And he always believed in me. And he was like, Kate, how about we just pump the brakes a little bit? I think some big things are going to be coming your way, like whatever. And I really blew up between like my sophomore and junior year. And then really my junior year, I was like, oh, like, started seeing power five interests, everything. And so I was like, oh, like I, I think I, you know, I can make it at a power, power five level and do well. And so then um, everybody knew when Iowa offered me, that was, that was, that was Okay. the end. That was Yeah. going to be one of my questions was mm -hmm. I, it, once you got that Iowa offer, was everything else off the table? Was it like, I'm going to Iowa? Yeah. Yeah. It was, Okay. I, I was waiting. They were like one of the last schools to offer me. And my dad knew he would always warn the other coaches. He's like, Hey, like, we really like you guys. You're awesome. But if Iowa offers, like, it's going to be tough competition. And I remember coach Bluter calling me and I just cried. I was so excited and went on a visit a couple months later and I committed on my way home from the visit. I was That's <laughs> awesome. like, there's no, no need to play around. I don't want to even talk to other schools anymore. I'm, I'm a Hawkeye through and through. No, So that's awesome. before, okay, before Iowa offered you, what, what schools were you like considering like in your head? Like, okay, if I don't get this offer, maybe I can see myself here. Yeah, there were like some local schools. Like I really liked SLU. It's Okay. A-10 conference, which I was like, ah, like, I don't know. I feel like I could have dominated in that conference, but I want, I was thinking To like, say the you know, to I say kind the of least, want, to say yeah, the I least. kind of wanted to be close to home. I really liked DePaul, um, Indiana, Mm, okay. uh, Wisconsin, Illinois, um, it's just some other big 10 schools, Nebraska, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it, I, I couldn't even pay other schools attention, honestly. <laughs> like I I was just. uh I was looking uh, a couple of days ago. I was looking at your high school recruiting profile, just a couple of your different profiles, and had a ninety scout grade. Awesome. But one thing I noticed, and I always notice this when, when we speak to people um, at the Division One level, if they were wholeheartedly like all the way committed to a school, then they remove everything, all the other schools that like offered you offer your profile. Yeah. So I go to your profile and I looked at like three of your profiles and it was just Iowa. And that's Yeah. all it said. Like, and then it says like some of this stuff has been removed and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, so Kate must have, when she got that Iowa offer, it was a wrap for everybody else. It, it really was a wrap to say the least. I, yeah, I knew I wanted to come here since I was little. so outside of basketball like off the court like when you're just you know trying to relax you're just chilling what is some stuff you like to do outside Yeah. of basketball Honestly, I just, I like to hang out with my friends, chill, watch TV. I, I, I'll go like, I like to be outside a lot. So I like to hike. I've done like all the local tra trails around here. Like okay I just like to be outside. I like to read. Um, so I don't know. I, that's really how I wind down, honestly. But um, I love fishing too. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Speaking of fishing, how does how did Coach Bluter feel about your love for water sports? Because I, if I was Coach Bluter, I would be like, "You need to get off that wakeboard immediately." You say. <laughs> Well, it's funny because uh, we had a couple of days off last year around the 4th of July. And she's like, Okay. I know a lot of you are going to the lake, but please be careful. Like she was begging us. She's like, don't go on any jet skis, anything. And of course, you know, we were on jet skis, but Oh it's no, like, I know. they're so dangerous. Like They it's scary, are. but I There's mean, so we much have, fun. There's so much fun though. yeah, we have a manager who has a lake house that we'd all go to and hang out and. you know, go tubing and stuff, but yeah. And wake surfing, man. I, I love being on the water. No, that's awesome. No, I know they they you guys think you were alone. I know they had Raina sitting up there in the trees with binoculars, <laughs> making That's what sure. she said. I'm going to beat all your butts if anybody gets hurt. <laughs>
that's funny. So take us through like a typical day, like in the life of an athlete, like during yeah. the season, what's just like a typical day for you? Yeah. During the season, definitely pretty a lot busier, obviously, but um I guess it depends when we practice. Like this spring, we practice in the afternoon. So right. I'd wake up, do schoolwork if I had any, which you know, I'm in one class, so <laughs> I can say from the perspective of my teammates, you know, they've got a little bit bigger of a workload. So uh, you wake up, you do schoolwork, you go to class because that's when our classes are scheduled in the morning with afternoon practice. And you've got to block off five hours for practice because it's a three hour practice. You got to get there an hour before and you probably are going to be there like an hour later. So it's really hard to find time to for classes. Um, so, yeah. And then you got to eat, get lunch, whatever. And then you go to practice. You get, we get there an hour before you got to get treatment, get taped, um, get shots up. We're always doing game like shots before practice with the coaches. Then you've got about a two to three hour practice, sometimes weights. Um, and then you've got treatment after and we eat. And then by that time, it's probably around 6 PM. And then, you know, people are probably doing a little bit more school or whatever obligations they have. And then repeat, recycle. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that day on repeat, honestly. Nice, nice, nice. So as far I, I sorry, Jay, I wanted to ask something real quick. So as far as that day to day, what is it like traveling? Because you guys travel a lot during season. Um, but what is it like traveling? And is there anything like you have to bring with you that makes it every trip? with Kate Martin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm very, I didn't realize this until recently, but I'm like a very superstitious person. Um, I pack the exact same thing every single time, even like typically like the same pajama set. Like I mm -hmm. like, but mm -hmm. so if we play on a Thursday, we'll practice Wednesday. And then right after practice, we eat, we um, drive to the bus, bus to the airport, which is about like 25 minutes away. Mm -hmm. And then We'll get there the night before, eat team dinner, um, then go to sleep, wake up the next day. Obviously, you don't have classes, but people might do some homework. And depending on what time the game is, then we'll have shoot around, uh, maybe a little bit extra film. And then you kind of get into your same routine. Now, like for me, like like I said, like I have to pack the same amount of socks, okay. the same like clothes, everything, <laughs> the same thing. And then like some like I, I've talked about this before, but like I have this blanket I sleep with every night like if I don't bring that on my trip no it's a no judgment zone yeah, over here yeah, thank, no you guys, zone. thank you guys if I don't bring that on my trip it's ruined I <laughs> am not happy we, and my teammates if, know it if Kate Martin ever had an off game it's because the blanket didn't make the trip <laughs> on on a game that we lost this year I didn't have it with me so okay. I'm just saying like that's where my superstitions come from <laughs> I, I was very superstitious too. And I used to have this teddy bear that I used to take with me everywhere until really? like, got, yeah, it got like, it got too damaged over the years because it was like a teddy bear I have since I was like two. This just went from a no judgment zone to a judgment zone. It's cool, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. I, I, look, I had my teddy bear, bro. We was rocking. His name was Teddy. We was, we was good for a long time. And then like, Creative. got too damaged, bro. And I moved from like Cleveland to Atlanta. It was crazy. It, he, he was gone. I was gonna say because we lived together before. I ain't never seen that teddy bear. So no, it took me, no, bro. It took me a long time to like cope with not having my teddy bear no more. Bro. That, that used to throw me off. I know my parents would always try to get rid of it, and I would always find it. I was like, yeah. just let me rock. And they no, yeah. <laughs> just, let me be just let, me let, me. let me be me. Just let me exactly. be me. Great. So, um, you said you're very superstitious. Did you have like a favorite basketball shoe you like to hoop in, or? Yeah, I wear the same two shoes. Um, home like if I'm wearing if we're wearing our white uniform or yellow uniform gold uniform I'm always wearing my white LeBrons okay yep then, I peeped that I peeped yeah, that the lows yeah if we're wearing black our away uniforms and I'm always wearing my gold LeBrons and that's it I don't I didn't it's crazy you say that and I've I've noticed that as well but we I feel like in the hoop community we always talk about LeBron shoes because they're so custom to LeBron's game Mm -hmm. But you kind of have a similar like play style to that where it's like, okay, she's going to do a little bit of everything. She's going to do a little bit of everything out there. So it's like you, the Kobe's might be a little too flimsy. Maybe the ankle's a they little are. too low. 
So I can, I can see that. Being, so, so the bronze, bronze durability, I can see that. I, I can definitely see why. Bronze. Yeah, I, I actually had to go through a couple. I went through two white uh, LeBrons this year because my other yeah. ones had holes in them. So. Wow. So yeah. I feel like I feel like recently LeBron shoes have started to be more molded toward like other people wearing it. But early LeBrons were definitely like he could he's the only person that could rock them and be successful. I know they were they used to be too heavy. These yeah, like, yeah. Wear, they're like a lot lighter. So yeah. I, I liked but like last year I, I used to only wear KDs. And then this year I just really liked the way the LeBrons felt. So I wore those. I saw I think Gabby wore the KDs this year. Mm -hmm. Oh, she wore the KDs yeah. a lot this year. I seen Happy with the KDs. I know Caitlin wore the Kobe's. Yeah. So that's kind of cool how you guys all wore a different, yeah. <laughs> different shoe. Yeah. Did you did you think about like you didn't think about throwing on those Venice beaches when they when y'all seen the Venice beaches the Kobe? No, no, I couldn't. I couldn't go. I couldn't stray away. Yeah, that's I I, that's loyalty right there. That's loyalty right that's there. Crazy. I, I used to hoop in the Venice beaches when I was in college. So when I saw that, I was like, that's dope that they got the Venice beaches. Yeah. Um, one thing I have to ask you about this: this is something that a lot I, I uh kind of teased this interview on Twitter, and like fans were just going crazy because they they love you guys. My dad told me that because <laughs> yeah. my uncle commented. <laughs> he, did, yeah. he told me to ask you who's your favorite uncle. I didn't. Know that. I, I can't answer that. Him. So somebody commented <laughs> trying to start family beef. Yeah, <laughs> this is crazy. So, yeah, we got a whole bunch of questions. But one thing that was very, very uh, similar that people wanted to ask is about this hot sauce. What's up with you in this hot sauce? Yeah, I I have a love for Cholula. The oh. hot, I don't know if you guys have ever had it. Yes, had the Cholula. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it has the little, it has the brown little ball yeah, top. Little, yeah, wooden top. Yeah, I am just seriously obsessed with it. I put it on just about everything, like all my meals uh always breakfast like i i can't even eat eggs without it anymore like so mm -hmm. our managers we didn't have any in albany and uh in albany for the first two days so the managers had to go to the store and buy so i was gonna, I was gonna say kate's having cholula withdrawal someone I please was. find this I woman was. some hot sauce i was and it's funny because i started loving it like gosh like four or five years ago now and Monica, who used to play last year, I don't mm -hmm. Monica Sonano. Yeah. We got the entire team obsessed with it. So Coach Bluter's obsessed with it. Like she's always like, Kate, where's the hot sauce? Like she's like, I know you have it. Like she's yeah, like, yeah. yeah, and the whole team loves it. So I've got like, you know how some college students above their cabinets, they'll like put alcohol bottles. <laughs> I've got like fifty to sixty Cholula <laughs> bottles up there, so we got to we we're, we're, uh, uh, I said we're gonna send you a case of Cholula hot sauce. That's because that's <laughs> that's gonna be no to go to brought me Cholula. I've got a surplus right now, so you're good. <laughs> that's hilarious. So okay, you guys have garnered a lot of attention over the last couple of years. Um, you guys at Travis Scott at your games. You guys are breaking records for like how many views and how many people are like watching your games. So at what point, like, what was there like a specific moment you can point back to where you were like, wow, like we really are big now. Like this is like, did something happen? You were like, this is kind of crazy. Like, I think it was like definitely this year. Last year it was super cool towards the end of the season. We were hearing rumors like, oh, maybe Patrick Mahomes is coming to the game mm -hmm. or like somebody. And so I was like, gosh, that's crazy. But really the support that we even had in the off season last year and then the hype around this season to start this fall or last fall, it was, I was like, man, this is not, this is not normal. Like, it's not normal. <laughs> this is not normal. Like going to the grocery store and it's just like constantly people asking for pictures or autographs. Mm -hmm. And I was, just, I don't know. It was really cool though. And I mm -hmm. think once Caitlin was like telling me some people who were reaching out or like just seeing the social media stuff of fans coming and then like Jason Sudeikis started coming, Travis yeah. Scott wanted to come and I was like, okay, this is not normal. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> At all. At yeah. all. <laughs> it, and so it was just, it's super cool. And actually, like, meeting, you know, some of, like, these celebrities, it's just made me realize, you know, like, they're just normal people. Like, they just love basketball just like the rest of us, you know. They just like to watch, you know, good basketball. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're all super cool. And it's just, I don't know, it's just really awesome to see, first of all, Caitlin getting that support and, like, how many people she's brought to, you know, you know, eyes to women's basketball. And then Absolutely. like none of those people just support Caitlin though. Like they, they all like, like our entire team and they love coach Bluter. So it's just like, I don't know. It's, it's just been super cool. 
I me and me and Jo over like the past, I want to say four or five months, we've all, we always talk about it. it. Comes up like once a week, just how much of a team you guys are. Like, of course, I mean you as you mentioned, Caitlin Clark, amazing, mm -hmm. nothing, nothing but greatness, right? But you guys are the most team team I've ever seen in my life. Like it's just such a team effort every every time. It's it's insane to watch. It's cool and like I wish that people started watching Iowa women's basketball. Like even my freshman year, like mm -hmm. we made it to the Elite Eight when I was out with a knee injury. Um, my freshman year, we had Megan Gustafson, Kathleen Doyle, um, some really great players. Even Tanaya, who's a coach yep. now, like we were teammates back in the day. Which that, is isn't crazy. that crazy? To yeah, them. it's crazy. So <laughs> she was a stud, man, stud. Yeah. But, gosh, but anyways. Um, Gustafson was all amazing as well. I remember that yeah. I was I was I started watching Iowa basketball when Garza was there. Yeah, when Luca Luca Garza was there his oh, first yeah, year, and yeah. then in turn I started watching the women's team too. And that so yeah, Gustafson was a beast. Yeah, but it was it's just like it's always been this way, like team basketball. That's just mm -hmm. always what Coach Bluter has preached. And then you know it's been cool to have somebody like Caitlin come along and just bring all the attention and all the eyes towards it because. It, it didn't start with just us and just Caitlin. Like it's been like this for so many years. So it's been cool that it's been highlighted now. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, this is another thing that everybody has been asking. What is next for K Martin? What, uh, what do you have just on the docket for your future? Yeah. yeah uh, Monday's the draft. So, you know, I'm hoping that I see my name across the screen. Um, there's been a couple mock drafts that, you know, have had me um, in their I don't know, draft board and uh, I've heard a couple teams are interested. So Absolutely. I'm hoping that, you know, I see my name. That's like a dream, another dream come true. Um, and then, you know, going to a training camp and, you know, hooping and that's, you know, I'm going to be ready for it. And, uh, you know, even if I don't hear my, you know, see my name across the screen on Monday, I'm hoping I get an invite to a training camp and, uh, no, I'm just going to be prepared. I'm going to be ready for it. And I know how hard it is to make a roster in the W like it's yeah. not easy. I've had so many teammates try to, and like, and, and one thing, one thing I'm really hoping for, I know um, that the WNBA will be renegotiating their, their media rights deal in the next couple years or so. I'm really hoping for expansion. I really hope that they add a couple teams to the W because there's so much talent. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the talent pool is huge. So I, I would just love to see them add another couple teams. Me too. To the um, I think there's like another team that they're about to add and they're in talks with, uh, I think adding a couple more after that, but I think there is another team. 2025. Be there's mm -hmm. going to be another team, I think in San Francisco. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. That's like, that's my goal right now. And kind of just want to get a feel for how training camp goes. If it goes good and I get good feedback, like, you know, with an expansion team, you have a high possibility of making a roster, then Absolutely. I'd probably go overseas and, and play. Um, but as you guys know, I'm really close with my family. So it'd be really hard for me to be gone for six, seven months, especially. Well, 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 so, so, something tells me that they'll be out there for a few games. So <laughs> that's true. That's, <laughs> they travel well. You're yeah, right. Say, something <laughs> tells me they'll be out there for a few games. Yeah. That's part of so the that, but ultimately at the end of the day, like I want to get into coaching and i I, you know, aspire to be the next coach Bluter one day when I'm, you know, a little bit older, but, um, yeah, for I, right I know now, they're already, they're already calling you for coaching. I know that, I know that, I know that <laughs> like they're already, uh, we, cool. we saw a tweet the other day where they were like, we already got an office set up for you down the, down the hall. <laughs> yeah. That's what our athletic director said on Wednesday at our yeah. celebration. So that, that was cool to hear, I guess. I was going to say, that was one thing I wanted to ask you, like, what was that like? They really put the pressure on you. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay. Yeah, I, honestly, <laughs> I didn't even know what to say, but I'm only staying at Iowa if J.O.'s working at Iowa too, right? <laughs> That's what I, hey, you, I tweeted that out. I, I was, saw your tweet. I saw your tweet. If offering jobs, I, you feel me? Like, what's going on? <laughs> exactly. But, yeah, I appreciate that. But um, so – I just me and Carlos talked about this. I think that your game is is very it's very set up for the pros. I think there's a lot of a lot of the really good teams could use a player like Kate Martin. You're gonna do everything. You're gonna swing the ball. You're gonna you know guard whoever you gotta guard. You can knock down the three. And one thing that I feel like a lot of people don't talk about. You've shown the ability to score off the dribble too. 
Like hey, when that, talk, tell, uh, talk about the move, Jay. Talk about the move, Jay. Look, when people, you know, overplay Caitlyn and they're like, all right, what's, what are we about to do? Kate Martin just said, I'm about to go straight to the rack. And then when she get there, what's going to happen? Spin move, fade. That drop spin, spin to the fade, fade is, oh, the my goodness. Fade. Every time I see you about to make the move, I'm like, it's good. It's good. She gets it. She gets to like two steps above the above the block, right above the hat where the half circle is, and then she's faking right that spin back left. I say, yeah, you got him every time. Every time, the thing is, though, never fails. Is she has different shots off the spin depending on how the defender plays her. If the defender just is completely lost, it's to the cup easy lay. If the defender's still there, she might have to fade, but she getting the bucket. That's the crazy part. But even the pull up, you get to the, in the middle of the lane, you got the pull up. So you have a lot of skills that I feel like can translate to the next Absolutely. level. Along with just being a versatile player, I think that a lot of teams could use a player that's as versatile as you. Well, thank you, guys. I appreciate that. <laughs> that's that's love. But yeah, I I I really believe I just need an opportunity. I need to get there in person. I just need to like you know. So I think I have a lot of intangibles. Just being like a vocal person. Like I'm not a, I'm not scared of like you know just going there and just being me and like exactly. yeah anything. like leading. So it's like I I really just want to get there in person. I just need one opportunity. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm really hoping that my game will translate. But I know how good those players are. Like, don't Absolutely. get me wrong. Like, you know, they might send my shot a couple of times. Like, all right, sure. but you know, I'm gonna learn from it. So, but, but the biggest the biggest thing that, that when they talk about the W, they don't really mention this. But the biggest thing about the W is the physicality. It's an extremely physical league. For sure. And I and that's where I think you will excel in that aspect coming in as a rookie because. You're ext- you're an extremely physical player yourself. So mm-hmm. just having that off the rip, like understanding the physicality of the game, I think that's huge going into the W. Yeah, and it helps. I'm I'm not like fresh out of like like I'm not 22 years old. You know, like I'm about to be 24. Like I've been around the game. Like I've been in college for six years. She let them like, know she grown. Yeah, like okay. <laughs> mature, very mature. So we'll see. I'm really excited to see what happens for the future. And uh, I know I've got a lot of people in my corner, so it's Absolutely. it's pretty cool to see. And uh, I know no matter what, if it works out or if it doesn't, I've got a lot of good options. And, you know, it's not it's not the end for me. So it's pretty cool. Uh-huh. Like a little scary, the unknowns, everything right now. But I know whatever I do, it's going to be, you know, something great. So I heard you mention le- leadership earlier. You're known as the glue. Mm-hmm. where did how did you develop where did you develop those leadership intangibles like you're so poised all the time i feel like you never get too high never get too low where did that mentality where did that attitude come from yeah i don't know if i've always just like had this i think i've always kind of been like a natural born leader where mm-hmm. it's just like or i don't know why i don't like people listen to me uh, they gravitate think, towards what you towards what you say how you how you move things like that yeah and i i like i've never really like asked for people to do that i think it's because i'm i love building relationships with people and i've gained people's trust um and i also think it's come from like people see how hard i work so i would never ask anybody to do something that i wouldn't do myself and yeah. so i think like that's that's that's, 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 that's that's yeah. it right there. It's a, respect think, factor. it's a respect factor. You yeah. you build respect and they they then want to listen. They're like, okay, well, she, if she's working this hard, she's doing this, she's leading by example. I'm going to listen to what she says because she's doing it the right way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think exactly that's kind of where it comes from is like I've just always been that way. And like really in high school is where um, I started to see it. But like what I think has been something that I've learned and I didn't learn this until my freshman year of college when I got injured is – like how to be your teammates biggest cheerleader also and be super encouraging and building them up because like in high school, I think, you know, there can be some jealousy. Everybody's trying to, you know, go play D one, whatever. Like you're not really there to like help each other. You're almost like fighting against each each other. other. Yeah. It's, it's a free for all. It's every man for himself. Exactly. And then my freshman year I got injured and I was sidelined and I, I never faced an injury besides like a sprained ankle before. And, I got to watch some of my really great teammates lead and how they were always hyping each other up. And I really hadn't seen that too much yet. And I I learned how to, you know, uh, just try to get everybody's best out of themselves. Mm -hmm. And that was by encouraging. And uh, so that really helped me because, I mean, everybody from high school going into college, you think you're all that. You think you're amazing, you know, like you were the top dog on your team and then you get to 
college and you're just like everybody else. Like it's, it's, it's starting, it's starting from the bottom all over again yeah. and, and building yourself back up. Exactly. So I think tearing my ACL was one of the best things that could have happened to me because, uh, from my sophomore year, which was technically technically my junior year on, like I was captain for four years. And mm -hmm. um, I really learned how to have tough conversations when, you know, nobody else really wanted to have them. Yep. I, I said what needed to be said um, because everybody knew I had the team's best interest in mind. Mm -hmm. I wasn't just saying that to say that. Like I, I was trying to help us win and I was trying to continue that good culture that everybody I'd seen everybody else do. So uh really and like that comes from the respect thing like I couldn't say that if I didn't have have anybody's respect or Absolutely. nobody like you know people didn't see me in the gym or working hard or you know encouraging everybody so honestly I think uh I learned a lot from college and from coach Bluter and former teammates but that like natural born uh leadership where you just kind of have earned people's respect by building relationships caring for other people I think that's kind of always been there since I was young. That's amazing. I have a um a question somebody told me about a crazy situation that you had uh I oh, think Lord this year after the South Carolina game oh, with like yeah. getting getting drug tested or something. Yeah. Can you tell us about that story. Yeah, man. Okay, so <laughs> we just beat South Carolina, the best team in the country at the time. Hadn't lost a game all year like this team from Iowa comes in and beats them. And it's the biggest game of my life. And I, you know, we're celebrating in the locker room. We're so hyped. And then the NCAA is like drug testing. Kate, come on. I had just played 40 minutes, 40 minutes. I'm like, dude, I have no liquid in my body. I'm drinking water. Well, Mind you, I'm a little pee shy. Like, I don't want people to watch me. Of course, of course. Like, I think I think we all are. <laughs> yeah, get out of my face. Yeah. So I was there until like 2 a.m. I was there for like four hours after the game because I couldn't pee. And so yeah. I was so mad. Like all my family was back at the hotel ready to like cheer me on as I got off the bus. And they're like, where are you? And I wasn't allowed to be on my phone or anything. So I was like, can I send a text to my family to tell them to leave? And they're like, sure. But I had to watch me like type it out. And I'm just like, man, this is this hey, is craziness. They said, so they this said, year I didn't get drug tested. <laughs> oh, thank God. They said 40 minutes out of yeah. South Carolina. Yeah. So keep her back. Keep her back here. <laughs> right. Keep her back. Right. That, that, that don't make no sense. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it was just like a little blip. It, I was just upset that I couldn't celebrate one of the biggest moments in my career. That, and, which definitely is. That's yeah, crazy. That sucks. Yeah. So uh, just a couple of little quick questions. Um, who, if off the top of your head, who would you say is the toughest player you had to guard? Like just throughout mm -hmm. your career. Yeah, I've guarded some really good players. Like I guarded I've guarded Ryan Howard before. Um wow. great Grace Berger, uh Diamond Miller. Um big so some names. There are some names for sure. Yeah, I've guarded like in before this year, like I used to guard guards too, like point guard and stuff. Like I've guarded Jazz Shelley, I've guarded JC Sheldon before. Mm. Um, you know, and but I mean, I've guarded Caitlin in scrimmages. Like we were always, you know, on opposite teams um, during summer scrimmages, and so uh, is is an Iowa basketball practice intense? Is it a very because it seems like you guys are so chill and laid back? But I know, I know it gets, in, I know it gets super intense. Yeah, like. We actually had to stop playing against each other because every time we'd always start fighting and the coaches yep. would be like, what is going on? Like, but it's just because we get so competitive and we mm -hmm. want to win. And like those summer scrimmages, man, you would want to rip somebody's head off sometimes. And I'd then love to have been a fly on the wall. Yeah, for, for we'd always, each other. What's that? Y'all be talking crazy to each other. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, it's. Especially me and Caitlin, like that's what I we just could not <laughs> we could not be chill, like, like dude, like, and then she'll just hit a shot from half court and just like you're just silenced. Like, what are you gonna say? Like, I couldn't say anything. It's just so. one of those like, oh, I hate you. Like, <laughs> Literally, I'm like, thank God you're on my team, but you're not right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. What was what was your favorite gym to play in that wasn't Carver? Mm, yeah, yeah, I've got one. I. I liked playing there, but I also hated playing there. It was Indiana at Indiana. Um, oh, Indiana has an amazing arena. Yeah, it's it's insane. Like, mm -hmm. those seats are so steep, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like at a 90-degree angle. So yeah. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Like, I, I loved playing there because the environment was awesome, but I also hated playing there because their fans are nuts and it's hard to win there. So 
Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I got, a, I got, a, I got, a, I got a question for you. This, this, and if, and if Jayla, you have one after us, cool. I always ask Jayla when we when we're sitting in Carver, you guys are coming out after you guys go. You guys go back in during warmups, and you guys come out. I think the last eight or twelve minutes, something around there, right? Something mm -hmm. around there. Um, you guys come back out. I always ask Jay. I said, "Do you think they're nervous at this point? Do they still get nervous?" And so I, I wanted know. to ask you that. Do yeah. you do you still get that butterfly feeling? Do you get ner nervous at all? Like, does that happen? I get like really excited. Okay. Um, sometimes I get butterflies like running out because of all the fans, but I don't. I don't get nervous anymore. Okay. I didn't. I like all last year. I never really got nervous. I think just because like. I don't know. It was like so. Weird. So Jalen was right because he looked at me. He was like, "No, they don't get damn. They don't get nervous. They they don't get nervous. Those uh, girls out there, they don't get nervous. No, no nerves there. I used to be nervous before every game. It didn't matter who we was playing. We could have played the worst team in the world. I was nervous before the game. <laughs> so um, I had uh, what was my last question? Okay, so you you guys have left such a crazy like legacy. You know, at Iowa, you guys have. All these kids, boys, little boys, little girls who have watched you guys play, who are going to grow up now and think, all right, now we can do stuff similar to this. You know, I think that's that's amazing. But how does what, what type of feeling does that give you knowing that, like, these little girls are going to see you guys playing in front of millions of people in front of sold out arenas and think, OK, we can now do that. That's the norm. Yeah, well, I think that's like the most special and like the coolest thing about it all is like, yeah, winning big games is awesome. Going back, you know, to back-to-back -back national championship games is awesome but like the greater impact is the coolest thing ever like breaking viewership records you know having thousands and thousands and thousands of people coming to all of our games selling out carver hawkeye arena this entire year like selling out away gyms like we're out in new jersey and we've got more fans than the home team like that's insane like y'all are out in albany yes <laughs> like it's a home game so it's <laughs> crazy like i don't know it's just super special um and i don't really even you know i don't think i can even appreciate it that much when i'm still like in the moment right now and i've only had like a few days post iowa women's basketball but like i think when i'm older i'll really be able to look back and be like wow like i i can't believe like how much we changed the game and how we were a part of you know women's sports really on the rise um mm. so that's just super cool but more than anything it's like not only is it so cool to see little boys wanting your autograph like i probably signed like a hundred young boys autograph on wednesday and then like little girls just asking me for a hug they're like i don't want anything just a <laughs> hug and i'm like of course i'll give you a hug like this is so cool but like even hearing stories of men who are like in their 40s 50s 60s you know saying I never watched women's basketball until you guys. And then they get like emotional about it. It's like, that is crazy. <laughs> like, that is so cool. So, I mean, I don't know. Like, I can't even believe that I'm a part of it, but I, I feel so grateful that I am. No, it's, it's funny you say that just real quick because we were, we were sitting on the opposite side of the bench, probably like three or four rows up. And this little girl runs to the back. It's Allison's daughter, Jalen. She runs to the back. She goes, uh, Kate Martin, uh, you guys had just won. Uh, I think you guys had just beat West Virginia. West Virginia and yeah. so you guys are going to the back. This little girl runs, and her mom's like, where are you going? And so she disappears into the little area. She comes back. She puts her shoe on. She goes, Kate Martin signed my shoe. And, and, I was just, and she was like, oh, wow. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, how did you get back there? <laughs> like, how did you get back That's there? Awesome. And it, it was, it's just it's great, though, to see, like, the impact that you guys truly have brought such it's been it's been so refreshing for the game of basketball which you guys have brought to the game yeah. it, it's been awesome and like I don't know like I just want it to continue to grow for women and men like it's just it's so cool and I don't know I think more than anything I've said this a couple times it's just like the joy we brought to people and like how many people Absolutely. we brought together like you know you can't you can't ever lose memories like you might not remember the scores of the games or whatever but you know, it, it really is an everlasting life. impact, yeah. you guys. Especially yeah. with my family, like I mean, they came to every, like came everywhere, and like my family's been together more in the past few years than you know we ever have. So it's just been pretty cool. Yeah. Now, I always say basketball brings people together. Basketball it brings people together. It's, it, it's a testament to you guys. Like, there's people that like have never ever said a word about women's basketball to me that were like 
have full conversations about women's basketball with me now. And like, it's people that I would never guess, like dudes, like straight from the hood, like that really love women's basketball now. And I'm like, that's, that's insane, bro. So you guys have truly had like a, a worldwide impact and it's, it's amazing to see. Um, my last, I have just the last couple of questions. Um, who is the funniest player on, on the team? Who would you oh, say? A good one. That's a good one. Funniest player on the team? Yeah. <sighs> Jada. <Jim laughs> Jada, I get. Jada just seems so happy all the time. <laughs> Jada seems so like funny. she's funny even when she's not trying to be funny. Like she can that's be the better. thing about her is like she can turn something that's not even funny just like into something so funny so quick. Like she's so quick witted. Like she always has a response to anything. And you know, we can get in trouble with her sometimes because it'll be the coaches saying something, talking to us serious. And if you make eye contact with her, boy, you better look out because, ooh, she's hilarious. Oh, that's great. Who would you say is the most likely to, like, leave their shoes? Like, we're about to play and they're like, oh, I don't got my shoes. Like, just somebody who's going to forget. Jada. <laughs> Again, <laughs> she, she forgot her shoes a couple times this year and she had to wear the managers, so. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's well, great. Did you got anything else? Um, now the last uh I, I just wanted to know who was your favorite athlete ever? Yeah, yeah. My favorite athlete ever? Yeah, like favorite athlete. You're just like, man, the, the, she or he is just yeah, light years above everybody in my eyes. Yeah. Well, gosh, I, I'm thinking about like women's basketball players for me is Nafisa Collier. I love her. Okay. Um she's wow, that's from a good the same one. She's from the same area as me and uh, went to a school in St. Louis and her head coach was my AAU coach. So I like watched her in high school and in college all the time. And then um, now in the W still, but my favorite awesome. like NBA player was Steve Nash. Ooh, <laughs> I, I like that. Steve I like Nash. that. Like I just can watch his highlights all day. <laughs> I don't I don't know, man. I've always loved him. So yeah, for sure. Both he did he did the thing about Steve Nash, he just played free. He just yeah. played free out there. Oh, he man. Just, yeah, he was awesome. No, no, that's that's amazing. That's uh, amazing. Were there any uh like players that you looked up to growing up, like that kind of helped you mold your game or like did you were like, I want to kind of play like that? Well, I this is kind of funny, but like for one of my birthdays growing up, I had Angel McCautry on my birthday cake. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I know. I don't like, I just tough. like, I well, think Angel was the first pick ever for the was, Atlanta Dream. It was tough. Yeah, she was the she first was pick tough. ever for so, the Atlanta Dream. Yep. I, I watched her um, in college and uh, when I was really young. So I had her on my birthday cake That's when great. I was little. And I, I really, um, <laughs> Yeah, I really looked up to her, and she kind of is like what really got me into watching basketball. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. That's, That's cool. cool. Mm -hmm. Well, Kate, we really appreciate your time. I feel like this is a great interview. Um, you're uh, good luck with everything you have moving forward. I think that we we're really rooting for you to get into the WNBA. I think that you'll improve whatever team that uh, you get to. So good luck with all of that, and um, whatever your future endeavors are, we know you're going to excel. So. We really appreciate your time and you uh, checking us out on the SSN network over here. Uh, Lopes, you got no, Okay, I greatly appreciate it. Again, you are a legend. We appreciate everything you've done for the game. Um, a lot of people don't get their flowers, uh, so we want to give you yours. You you have been a, a great role model for young kids everywhere. And like Jalen said, we're 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 on this journey with you. We're gonna follow you. Um, we're going to the, uh, we got invited to go hang out with some of the dream, uh, coaching staff and stuff like that on Monday for their draft party at, in Atlanta. So give a little, yeah, yeah. Give them a little I, nudge. Yeah. <laughs> no, I so. appreciate you guys. You guys have been awesome. And thanks for everything you guys have done for sports and women's sports this entire year. I love how you guys always spread the love. You know, it's not just one person, one team, one player, like, it's been awesome. And you guys bring a little fun twist to it. And so many people have fallen in love with you guys. And so seriously, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. No, no it's, it's been a pleasure. Kate. It's been a pleasure. So you have a great rest of your day. Yeah. Um, I, I know you don't have any more classes for the day. So get, get, get some out. get some rest, get some Cholulas and, and you know, <laughs> have, have a good one. Thank you, All guys. Right. This has been another one over here with your boys on SSN. And just like that, we out. Hey, we're out.